for any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check out G2A.com. And if you need any Ultimate Team coins, then head over to UFIFA. The code CHEZ will get you a discount on both sites and all links are down below. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 11 of the career mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with a game away from home again against another side that are up and about us in the league. It's Carlisle United. It's a long way to go to uh, to go for an away game. It's all the way up basically Scotland on the, the west coast of England. And uh, it's about a six or seven hour drive from where I am down in Cambridge. So uh, it's not the uh, nicest of away games. And uh, of course we'll try our best though to get a decent result away at Carlisle because of course we're punching above our weight at the minute like we said yesterday we uh, we of course knocked out another League One side in the Johnson's Paint Trophy and uh, we're uh, definitely there and thereabouts when it comes to automatic promotion and or a playoff finish so far this season in good form and consistent form so far which is good it's something that we uh, we lacked at the uh, the start of the season but it's something we're trying to knuckle down with now although we are seeming to play a lot of teams that uh, up and around us in the league now as opposed to a few teams that were down near the bottom we had a run of teams that uh, kind of were in the bottom six we got some good results against we of course uh, had a, a negative result yesterday against Burton unfortunately but we get off to a good start here Kwesi Apaya is uh, back in the starting lineup after being injured for uh, for four weeks and he's taken his time to get back on the score seat he's uh, be, I've started him ahead of Robbie Simpson despite the fact that Robbie was scoring goals in Quezzi's absence, but oh, back on 1-1. What a finish, by the way. Lovely move. Not really much you could do about that from a defensive standpoint. But back to Quezzi. He's come into the starting lineup again after, uh, of course, like I say, having his injury, partnering back up with Tom Elliott, who is in great goal-scoring form himself. And Quezzi here comes close to making it 2-1, although his header isn't quite on target. But he has been getting back to goal-scoring form. He scored one yesterday, and uh, he came close there to, uh, to a second. Probably should have done better with that free header to be completely honest but he scored the opening goal in this one and he hadn't scored that many goals prior to this game and was actually a little bit insecure um, you know morale wise according to uh, the squad report but he's back on the score seat not once but twice in this game against Carlisle to give us a 2-1 lead so twice he scored and twice we've led in this game we're still in the first half it was a really entertaining game away at Carlisle I didn't expect it. I was thinking it was going to be a nervy affair like the game against Burton was. Actually, as they hit the inside of the post there, as we're uh, five minutes before half-time, this was a really open game that had chances at both ends throughout the uh, the 90 minutes. As you can see, we're 10 minutes from time now. Carl going to have another chance. Billy Painter squares it up. Somehow Dempsey manages to shrug off Colson and in the process with his first touch, take it around the goalkeeper. Really disappointed that I wasn't able to get rid of that. Colson there just bounces off him and then I'm not really too sure how the ball goes underneath Chris Dunn as he races out but he was able to put it into the back of the net almost chips it over the top of the bar to be completely honest but still Dempsey was able to put it into the back of the net to make it Carlisle 2 Cambridge 2 and that is how we finished so a point from a team that are, you know around about us in the league which is better than we did against Burton yesterday so as an improvement we're playing Wickham now who are another side that are in the top five or six places that uh, there and thereabouts when it comes to promotion or the playoffs so uh, it's interesting to see how we're getting on against the teams around us right now because we seem to be getting results of all kinds we had the consistency at the start of the season like I said and recently with all of these big teams we've been playing it's been kind of a draw here a defeat there the win on the odd occasion as well so I was hoping to but just try and get some consistency in the performances and the results more so than anything else with uh, these games against uh, the sides that are up the top end of the table. They're playing a 4-4-1-1, which is a formation that we have done well against so far this year, but it is quite similar to the 4-2-3-1, which is a formation that we haven't done very well against so far this year. But Quezia Pai is in behind in the opening few minutes, and it's only a top save from Ingram that stops him from getting his third goal of the episode after we're really on top in the opening few minutes. As you can see here in the sec at the end of the first half as well, Five minutes from time, we have a corner that unfortunately gets headed wide by, uh, I think it was Quezzi again. I'm not entirely too sure who was underneath that, but we're still not done for the first half. Again, we're coming forward. Quezzi involved, up to Robbie Simpson. He's got a great goal from this sort of area against Northampton in yesterday's episode, although unfortunately this time not quite able to find the same sort of accuracy that he did yesterday. But we're into the second half, and uh, Max Grealish gets a little bit lucky there as he powers through that challenge. Quezzi slots through Robbie Simpson, and I still don't know why he slid in to try and 
and take that shot. If he'd have just put his foot through it, then it probably would have been 1-0 at the start of the, uh, the second period. But we're still on the attack, still trying to make the breakthrough. Luke Chadwick plays in Kwesi here. He's going to have to turn back to Luke Chadwick because they've got a lot of numbers back here. But Diallo threads a great ball through to Kwesi. Weirdly kind of locks off the ball and then locks back onto it. Hits the inside of the post, but unfortunately he was offside anyway. So even if it had found the back of the net, it wouldn't have counted. But Wickham started to kind of press forward a little bit more. And this was a surreal passage of play. Firstly, we clear the ball off the line after the defender had the uh, the initial bad touch and let them in. Then Chris Dunn makes a, a miraculous save from about four yards as their guy smashes it against him. And then it bounces about in the box again. We are able to eventually get it away. And they threw some bodies forward. Like I say, they were pushing a little bit more offensively. And Kwesi catches them on the counter-attack. He's clearly got the pace with his 91 acceleration and 91 sprint speed. And he just manages to get the finish away before the challenge comes in from the defender. It's a wonderful step over to turn inside and completely uh, send two defenders the wrong way. And uh, you'll see from the finish in the highlight, um, he literally, as soon as he kicks the ball, he gets crunched from behind. The step over there, brilliant. Kicks the ball, crunched, and it's just getting away in time to find that bottom corner to give us a 1-0 lead. And actually, we were on the attack in the uh, the end of the stoppage time as well. Quizzy misses his initial header, but drops only as far as Riku Ring. Good shot, squeezes through the goalkeeper's feet, but he dives backwards, Ingram, to bat it away. We aren't able to make it two, but we are able to ensure that we get a victory this time against one of the better sides in the division. So we drew with Northampton, we lost to Burton, we drew with Carlisle, we've beaten Wickham. So... I'm not really consistent against the bigger sides in the league. One thing we have had, though, is consistency against the lesser sides in the league. We've been coming away with 4-0 wins or 3-1 wins. You know, we've been getting great results and great score lines as well to go along with that. Accrington were down in around about 20th, 18th to 20th place, I think, in the league. Playing a more offensive 4-4-1-1, almost like a 4-4-2, uh, although O'Connor sat just behind the striker rather than, you know, kind of in a centre-forward position rather than uh, an advanced cam. But, uh, yeah, Accrington are down near the bottom of the table. But Accrington away has always been a tricky fixture for anyone. And I wasn't overly confident heading into this one, despite getting through uh, a decent result against Wickham and a solid performance against Carlisle. We're starting a 4-4-2 again, as we always tend to do at present. It's the best formation for this side of the minute. We don't necessarily have the strength and depth or the... Uh, the necessary uh, you know, qualities in specific positions to be able to play my favourite 4 2 3 one right now. And uh, we've got two great strikers in the side, or three great strikers really, with Robbie Simpson, uh, Kwesi Apai and Tom Elliott. So it makes sense to play at least two strikers up top. And sometimes they even put Robbie Simpson in at CM because he can play that role quite effectively. But unfortunately we went 1-0 down early on. For some reason, uh, both the defender and his th uh, their striker locked off the ball and it just ran straight past both of them. The attacker reacted first first and uh, was able to put it into the back of the net. We were not the other end there as you saw with Kwesi and had a decent shot but it was well saved and here a deflection could have taken that anyway from the man throwing himself at it but fortunately Chris Dunn was able to jump on it and we're actually only 10 minutes from time now as Jack Greedis and Robbie Simpson come on to try and change the game and make things you know a little bit more in our favour. I threw so many men forward though in these last 10 minutes they just went to uh, park the bus from about the 75th minute onwards. We're going to get a chance here through Kwesi well blocked by Alfred or Aldred I'm not really too sure uh, who that was but uh, we're going to drop again to Elliot finds Robbie Simpson on the edge of what's great turn tries to find the bottom corner but again similar to the shot he had against Wickham not able to find the accuracy to get it into the back of the net and we actually lose the game so we get decent results against the sides at the top of the table and a poorer result against the side at the bottom of the table which is kind of the complete polar opposite of what we've been doing so far this year but I guess we'll have to take it you know we're still fifth in the league we're still well inside the playoffs by three points and only two points away from third and still only three points away from second so I am still really pleased with how things are going so far and it's extremely tight at the top of League 2 as it always tends to be so you can see Accrington are now 18th and they were on 13 points so they quite possibly could have been down in uh, 20th 21st where I thought they were at the start of uh, that particular game so they've helped their league position we have helped our league position by picking up a win against Wickham who now sit only a point above us and getting the point against Carlisle who were the side sat in eighth just outside the playoffs but overall still doing very well this year and I'm really pleased with how the squad are playing pleased that Kwesi Apaya is back on the score sheet and in form because we needed him to step up because I didn't want to overly rely on uh, Tom Elliott because uh, well it's just it's not fair as he want goals to come from uh, all of your squad or at least uh, a handful rather than just the one guy if you end up relying on one guy or 
just two guys like uh, Liverpool did with Suarez and Sturridge last season, then you kind of come undone like they have this season. So it's the sort of scenario that I want to avoid, which is why I'm glad that other players are starting to chip in as well. But we've been playing really well. The squad are doing well. We sat in fifth. Like I say, I continue to say for a side that just come up from the conference, it's a very, very good performance so far. And hopefully we can improve that in the episodes over the weekend. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave the video a like as always, if you could be so kind. Check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days. There's uh, plenty going on at the minute with uh, the main career mode on the channel in the 1pm weekly slots. And of course, the My Player is still going from strength to strength as well. So check the channel page for anything you may have missed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Plenty of career mode coming to you here on Tesno Gaming. Two videos, seven days a week, 14 videos a week. So uh, hopefully there's at least something that will tickle your fancy. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.